kind of give a review of where you are and um kamar once uh, once he starts speaking can you just start the recording that'd be wonderful um so what's cooking eric okay so <clears throat> what's cooking um the usual uh, documentation uh, shenanigans mm -hmm. uh there has been uh, a bit of updates already on the developer branch on the documentation front uh, not not by me I got sidetracked again, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's slowly moving forward on my end. Um, so one thing I tasked uh, uh, Yang Hao with was to uh, to look into GitHub generating all the artifact files. Because whenever we had a slight change to a, a schema definition file for a smart contract, mm -hmm. for example, uh, then we would run the schema tool. The schema tool would generate loads of files that were all slightly different than, than the previous version. And then we had to put that in GitHub. And so the actual change was buried in a lot of files, right? You, you could, you could, you could change a tiny thing in the, in the schema definition file and then all of a sudden uh, there were 21 uh, generated files that were changed mm. wow so that was that was a bit of a nuisance uh, and made uh, 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 verifying the change by colleagues uh, harder because they had to wade through all the the nonsense uh, etc mm -hmm. so I asked uh, Yang how to look into GitHub Actions and see if he could figure it out. And so that was quite a task. Uh, so I jumped in with that. So we both worked on that and we have it working now. Nice. Um, it means that uh, we were able to delete more than 450 files hmm. from the repository. Because now what what GitHub uh, Actions will do when we push is uh, it will first install all the necessary tools like uh, the assembly script compiler and the tiny Go compiler and wasn't back for Rust. Uh, then it will build the schema tool. Then it will run the schema tool to generate all the uh, smart contract code in all three languages. Wow. Then it will use the install tools to build all the WASM versions for that. And then it will run uh, the linter and it will run the tests and it will even run the tests uh, for uh, WASM for different times. One with the direct Go version, one with the Wasm Go version, one with the Rust Wasm version, and one with the TypeScript Wasm version. So we have a what much more thorough testing on GitHub now. That'd be great. We, we would do that manually before pushing usually, but the uh, the GitHub version would only test the Rust code, and that was the the Wasm code that we pushed as part of the push. <laughs> so all those wasm files are gone and all the generated go code the generated type code and the generated rest code is gone so yeah over 450 files and uh that uh, that cleaned up nicely and then and then uh, going forward that'll make your life easier right so. yeah the only difference is that you need uh uh, when you do a fresh pool now, you need to first generate all those files because otherwise tests will fail or the mm. linter will start complaining. But uh, we, we were able to keep that simple. All you do is uh, make WASM and then it will generate uh, all, the, all the source code files that it needs and then uh, fix linting errors in those source code files because they, they are not perfectly get generated for the linter yet. But you can ask the linter to fix it for you. So then the linter will fix the generated files and then it's ready to lint the entire repo or to test on the repo and whatever. Uh, it, it won't be able to just run the 
there was some code yet because it doesn't build that yet. But that mm -hmm. Most people do not need that. So it's just the, the sing, single step to, to to generate the missing files. Um, so that uh, that has been our uh, stuff mostly. Um, there have also been some naming changes through the repository that were necessary uh, because of the shimmer is uh, a different kind of base token than uh, IOTA, right? They're separate networks with different mm -hmm. tokens. So uh, in our code, we were talking about IOTAs and that has now been replaced everywhere with base token. So that uh, the the code reads more generic, but that was uh, of course uh, a task that that uh, seeped through in a lot of Wasm code as well. So that needed to be do be done, and we also have the what originally was the dust protection uh, is no longer called dust protection, but it's. Uh, uh, Storage, storage fee or something like that. Of storage, mm -hmm. storage deposit. That that's storage it. deposit. Yes. Yeah. So those changes have been made in the repository. So all the terminology is uh, clean and consistent everywhere. Nice. Uh, so that's done. Um, well, for the rest, like I said, uh, some people were on vacation. Uh, some people were doing some documentation and some people are focused on some final bugs. Uh, there's one persistent bug uh, that has something to do with how MetaMask connects up with the EVM. It can lose the plot somehow. Yep. And that is something that, uh, that we've been pushing to the top of the list because yeah, we are not annoying. going to release unless we will uh, be able to uh, have that solidly working. So uh, <clears throat> that means that, uh, yeah, depending on how long it takes to fix that, uh, it could, could mean that it uh, delays the release a bit. Yeah, it's a frustrating because we're, piece. Of we're, get, we're getting close to releasing point, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, all those last minute details, it's as usual, the 80 20 rule applies, right? You think <laughs> you're so much ready, and then all those little details take up way too much time. Oh, yeah, wait a second. Yeah. Well, so yeah, um, then. Uh, we even discussed the X teams uh, today because the X teams will want to start doing things, uh, see what they could do. Um, and we, we, we ran through a few uh, examples that they could do. Of course, they can do lots of testing if they want, but uh, it would be nice if we would have some proof of concept uh, code. So we were running through a few ideas. So at first we were thinking, oh, maybe fair roulette would be a nice thing to uh, to have in EVM code, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, fair roulette uses some specific features of ISC, the timed uh, timed requests, uh, and that is something that EVM does not have. So that would have to be simulated somehow but the problem is that uh what's happening is that you your contract will generate a signed transaction essentially and since we cannot sign those from the evm we need to figure out a solution for that so uh, it became clear that for example timed um Timed requests are not an easy step, and we still need to close a gap in that uh, in, on the EVM side. Uh, mm. in, we we have the, this uh, well, right now we call it the magic contract, but uh, that's a working title. Uh, it it's literally it, 
essentially a bridging contract between EVM and ISC, but we don't want to call it a bridging contract because bridging has such a different connotation in uh, yeah in in the whole uh, crypto space. So we're we're looking at other names uh, to give it. Uh, so, but it it's essentially the the contract that is always loaded when the EVM is run that provides the interface to the ISC functionality and the sandbox functions. But yeah, we we will need to somehow provide some of that functionality that is hard hard to start from within EVM like something that needs signing because you can from EVM you can only sign Ethereum style. Mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's that's one problem. Uh, plus, you have things like uh, okay, if we're going to run uh, a triggered triggered function, who is going to pay the fees, the gas? That's another thing that you have to take into account. Where are those? Uh, what account are those payments going to come out of? Right, so mm -hmm. that that that's the kind of thing that uh, that you run into when you try to adapt. By the way, that was my coining uh, a name. I I I said maybe we should call it the adapter contract or something. Um, Seems like that's a good if, idea. If, yeah. If if you are adapting one system to another, you are always going to have to adapt things, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it it it's it's a headache. Uh, you need to think things through, right? Because you mm -hmm. also don't want to open security gaps. We saw today uh, how you can lose one hundred and seventy million. Yeah, I don't like. Yeah, the the, the, it, the word bridge. It, the bridge in right a now is, in a distributed yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it was a grab for all. Oh my gosh! They figured yeah, out yeah. what was going on, and then every everybody jumped on that uh, that gap, and everybody was feasting on the money. <laughs> Guess what we didn't need, right? I just saw that. I was reading the thread in real time when it was when it hit. I'm kind of going, "Oh my gosh, here we go again!" Right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, and sure. and then what? It, when you read kind of how what it, what what it looks like, what happened? It's just like really. Um, yeah, and it it, it, had class, been audited. It, it had been pointed out, and they they refused to fix it. <laughs> I only yes. followed uh, Speaker Pelosi this morning. Uh, so what happened exactly? I I don't know. Maybe it's good to just recap it quickly. Uh, oh, there was, was a, there's a, a there's a yeah no it's a, there's a bridge called Nomad that um, I'll let Eric explain. But basically, a hundred ninety. I I mean. How many, yeah. like 190 million or something evaporated? 70 or 190, something like that. Million evaporated yeah. from us, from a bridge because of some. Um, they did the, the funny code. part is, while yeah. it was going on, uh, somebody figured out what was going on. So he tweeted that he had found out what was going on. And it turned out to be so trivial, it had to do with initialization and. Uh, a zero address that, yes, the zero that was address. valid. The zero address was valid for something and that wasn't checked elsewhere and that zero address could then be used to trigger a payout. And, uh, and so people it, started even. copying the original transaction that started stealing and just changed the, it to their address. And uh, so all of a sudden, uh, it was a feast for all because everybody who was able to uh, to trigger that contract was trying to siphon money out of it. Yeah, it was literally like a, a slow train wreck, but I mean, but a, a fast one that everybody could actually see it happening in real time, and um, you know, the money money was just coming out like 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 you just put, you know poked holes in a bucket. It was ridiculous. Um, yeah. Yeah. And this is why I always say that smart yeah. contracts, uh, even though you uh, they're dangerous. You, you, the, the, you, if you have finance finances at stake, you cannot afford to have any gaps, which means that you need somebody with 
very, very solid knowledge and lots of eyes on the code and listen to everybody if they say that they have found something because they literally told them this time, right? This, yeah, well, that's probably not going to happen. Well, guess what? <laughs> if somebody, yeah, yeah, as you know, I mean, if somebody points yeah. something out, it's going to happen, you know? Yeah. It's it, like, it may not happen yeah. immediately, but eventually it will happen. Yes. Right? Yeah. So anyhow, that's what happened. And, and um, yeah. So um, I'll just give you another idea for a name. Back in, the, back in my heyday uh, with relational databases, um, we, we uh, connections to other data, we call them conduits. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so uh, I, I often hear ideas floating around of uh, making a tool that allows laymen to compose a smart contract out of components, etc. And I, I immediately start cringing when I when I hear them talking about the idea only, right? Because yeah. it, if you not you don't know solidly how to do proper software design, and especially if you are composing something out of components that you have no idea what they look like internally and how they should work together, then, uh, and, and the combinatorial explosion of things that can happen when you use those components together, mm -hmm. it, it has not been tested that way, right? So you give somebody else an option to do things with your components that may have been tested at a component level. And then once you start combining them, that's when the gaps start occurring all of a sudden. Yeah, unintended right? consequences. It's a supply yeah. chain issue, really, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, and yeah. So I don't see uh, what you regularly hear. Yeah, someday programmers will no longer be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that someday will be long after I'm dead, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, well, um, so on the, uh, sounds like on the EVM side, they've got quite a bit of work left, to, in my view. Um, I mean. Well, yes and no. Uh, it's usable as is, except for that uh, stupid hanger bug that, uh, that we need fixing. That, then it will be a lot stabler. Um, and and that means that a lot of what is there will work, but uh, it only gets interesting once you start using IOTA specific things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, what? Well, uh, yeah, okay, you're you're a cheap e EVM, <laughs> but but for example, we see constantly how uh, the bridges are being attacked, and that. Uh, that is a very, very fertile uh, area for hackers. Yeah. Well, if we can uh, eliminate that, like we can by using IOTA change, uh, then there the bridges are guaranteed and, and y y there's nothing they can do, right? Right. It, uh, actually, the, what, 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 what's coming out from you and the team um, actually can stop this runaway stuff in a lot of sense, right? And so yeah. all of a sudden, this could, this could yeah, be our, and, our, our heyday, um, right? Yeah, that one, and... Uh, Before uh, you go on, uh, sorry, uh, so is uh, that... Yeah. Alex, go ahead. Yeah, is there an EVM limitation there regarding the bridges, or why can't I implement a EVM smart contract without a bridge? That, that EVM contract is then running on our network, right? Oh, the layer yeah. two. Yeah, once you have EVM contracts running on our network, you can bridge between chains in a trusted way. But that is what is missing in the EVM world, right? All those bridges are trusted entities, and they are all uh they all have their own implementations because essentially it's the oracle problem again 
mm-hmm. right? You 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 have to go as long as you you're within your chain, you're secure. But at some point, you need to interact with the outside world, and that's when the problems start occurring. Right? You you need to yeah. trust the entities that you're talking to, and you need to trust those people to safeguard your money in a correct way and transfer it to another chain in a safe way and vice versa and and all those channels need to be safeguarded and 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 need to be completely safe and they're definitely not decentralized right and they're always uh, proprietary solutions and and and, and, often... and and you also have the scenarios where um you know you may even have looked at the code from one of those oracles or outside smart and 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 at the time that that iteration of the code was there it was solid but then they do upgrades right and then they and and they miss something on an upgrade or they mm-hmm. cause an, uh, uh, they cause a new issue that wasn't you know a new yeah. vulnerability because um, it was not, not tested end to end of course eh? Right. Yeah, or, right. or or it could be as simple that they create a new smart contract yeah. to do some bridging for a new token but that new smart contract contains a bug, right? And then all of a sudden, yeah. uh, it's yeah, it's a supply chain issue. It's kind of like so the MoonPay thing all over again, right? It's like if yeah, you, it's, yeah. But it's... Th- there are several levels there, right? right. Uh, at the smart contract level, there can always be bugs, right? That can be exploited. Yeah. If so, those need to be audited very well, and you need to listen to your auditors. If they point something out, you need to fix it. It's that simple. Right, but, but it's not like an EVM, uh, IOTA specific. Uh, you know, like these are IOTA features and opportunities that apply both to EVMs and WASM contracts. Yeah, but of yeah, course, what yeah, you but... point out is awesome uh, because when we really, you know, move towards decentralization, yeah, then now there's a chance to actually leapfrog the competition and say exactly. this is good, true decentralization. That's approach. exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So what 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 we have is that you can simply uh, convert your tokens to to other tokens. Sorry, I need to cancel that. Stupid Chinese scammers are trying to reach me. <laughs> um. So. Uh, yeah. The what what we have is is a trusted solution uh, that that nobody can interfere with so you can you can transfer your tokens between chains uh, without any actual party in between and and since that that party cannot be hacked or cannot be bug, buggy or cannot be anything uh, it there's simply no nothing there it's it's simply part of the base protocol so that that uh, um point of uh failure is has been removed and uh, the other thing that uh, that we don't have of course is uh minor extracted value where people right. reorder the 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 transaction Context, and in yeah. that and in that way scam people right so that's another thing that uh, that we removed not to mention that uh, removing the miners remains removing the fees yeah. and blah 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 blah. Although there, there's still always going to be some fees, of course. Yeah, right. So yeah, I I think our our technology is really solid. Um, in my opinion, that whole coordinated thing is so overblown because if, as, as you can see constantly. There isn't a fucking crypto out there that is not centralized. Yeah, they're all liars. They're all they're all centralized, literally. Uh, Ethereum has a, has a holding switch, right? We do it yeah. by stopping coordinator, but they also have a switch they can pull to halt it. So that's centralized. That's 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 Vitalik having the the, the finger on the button essentially. So what's decentralized about Ethereum in that regard? Or if you look at the mining cartels in, in, in Bitcoin, how, how many are there? Two, three, four? Huh. If, two, if, if they decide to collude, then it's game over, right? Okay, that's the game theoretical aspect, of course, right? Nobody wants to kill the goose with the golden eggs. Right, but, but, but it's possible. Yeah, 
And it, so and, you say and, nuclear power is more decentralized than leading blockchain protocols? <laughs> Sorry, what? So you're saying that nuclear nuclear weapons are more decentralized than leading crypto protocols when you talk about the button. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, because because often you need several people uh, through very strict protocols uh, to uh, to actually activate that, and mm -hmm. uh, those protocols aren't present in the crypto world. Yeah. If if people underhandedly decide to uh, okay, let's 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 do this, then uh, they will do that, and there's nobody going to stop them. Because there is no safeguards built in there, right? Uh, with the nuclear codes, there's all kinds of safeguards. There, there are witnesses present uh, in in uh, with everybody who needs to be involved, and you need to have three groups that are anyway a bit antagonistic towards each other to agree on this shit, right? So uh, it it. It, and it's 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 a very well thought out protocol. You have all the steps you need to go to, like you see in the movies, right? They break this card, then they have to read this code, and then they have to enter that code, and then mm -hmm. they have to turn three keys at the same time. And I don't know, uh, a lot of that is movie bullshit, but similar protocols are yeah. in place, and they have been well thought out by people who know what they're doing. To make sure that there is not really a risk of some idiot like Trump deciding to push a button, he cannot do that. He he he, he can try to initiate the process, <clears throat> but all the balances and checks in place would have prevented him from doing something like that. Right. Uh, it, yeah. It's not. It's not that simple. It's not like, oh, uh, I I have the codes to the nuclear uh, weapons. Yeah, well, yeah, you <laughs> are part of that system now, but that doesn't mean you can just activate it like that. Uh, right. There's going to have to be something else uh, going on. You 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 cannot even activate them if you're not already at DEFCON one or something like that. Yeah, there's so and there's a lot more we don't even know, right? I mean, I yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. So uh, I just hope there's no backdoors in that. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> <We> bridges. All <laughs> <do>. <laughs> and hopefully there are bridges between the different nuclear powers. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> lines of communication. Yeah. That if, are not hacked. If, 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 if they want to swap some nuclear weapons. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh well. Um. Okay, so um, any other um, um, nuggets of information? Um, um, well, like I said, a uh, few people were on vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we had a, a little snack with some code that wasn't fully pushed uh, before vacation. So that is now being corrected. Uh, and that means that uh, some uh, part of the project that we we were we, we wanted to integrate finally can get integrated. I don't remember which part exactly. It has to do something with the okay. the committees, uh, uh, the protocol around uh, uh, the key generation, etc. Which is uh, far from my bad show. So uh, that's that's the higher order cryptography. Uh, things going on and we have some really smart people that that do that stuff uh, that's i i i read up on that every now and then and then i go like uh, okay nice <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe at some day i i will go like oh yeah now i understand this shit uh, i mean that's what happened with with most of it right uh, the, the original iota protocol was like magic and then all of a sudden something clicked and then i understood it completely because once 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 it clicks right there's this aha moment and then you go like, oh this is how it works and that happened several times during all my uh, uh working in crypto uh just just sim simple cryptography right public key cryptography how that works mm -hmm. 
it wasn't until I had to build that at low level for Cubic that I really started understanding how hashing and uh, random, the randomization, uh, what what the, the algorithms behind it, it are that make it happen, and how solid it is, right? How how hard it is to break it because of the statistics involved. And those aha moments uh, I have regularly, uh, especially uh, when I listen to uh, to Ivaldas or write his, or read his uh, writings, because he, uh, he 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 manages to say it in the right way for me to receive it usually. Yeah, which is hard. Yeah, very hard. That was what 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 in the CFB days uh, was our biggest problem. CFB. Yeah. Full of ideas, he was full of it, but he uh, he <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't communicate them. We needed yeah. we had two people that were doing the the translation to human speak constantly uh, to to interact with the rest of the team because it was useless to have everybody talk to him because it was hard enough for those two, two people to keep up. Yeah. So yeah, and uh, that that thing I have with distributed key generation, I haven't really dove into that. So I'm sure if I would do that, uh, it, it, uh, there would be this click at some point, and then it would be like, oh, okay. But yeah, uh, I have other stuff that I have my hands full with. <laughs> yeah. So okay. So. Um... Yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, yeah. okay. the gist of it. Uh, we got a lot. Uh, most of the team, I would. It seems like a, a great portion of the team still on vacation, right? So, uh, no, not really. I, yeah, I think it's the three or four, but uh, a, a few of them are about to go on vacation. Oh, okay. Uh, I myself will. Uh, I will go on the twelfth for two weeks. Okay, so I'll make sure that we won't. Hold the meeting while you're gone. Well, it could be. I still sit in in, in the meeting. Uh, well, I don't want to do that to, to you. Do it's that, your but... vacation. Come on. <laughs> I usually uh, wake up earlier than my wife, and then I open my uh, phone, and then I go to Slack, and mm -hmm. I quickly read up on everything. So I yeah, but I'm, that's not I'm, fair to you. We can stay wait. up to date. <laughs> Okay. Um, so timeframes wise, it sounds like we, you know, we got some code out there. Um, so people are kicking the tires on things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mo mostly uh, the the problem that people are kicking the tires right now are bumping into is the lack of documentation. So that is that is our, also our priority. Mm -hmm. So the one one is uh, making that uh, EVM bug stable. And two is uh, getting the documentation out there. So my uh, intention for today is to, to spend the entire day on documentation and no distractions. So. Okay. okay. All right. Any, uh, any um, questions for um, Eric before we uh, jump off? Okay. Well, you all have a great uh, rest of your day. Thank you, Eric, for this. And thank you for the recording, sure. Kumar. And uh, you guys have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.